this challenge is really pulling away from me now. I think it's going to take a miracle to, to pass this, if I'm honest. Get in there. Yeah! I'm beginning to think I can do this. It's another 22 pound. Another 22 pound. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mark Pitchers, way to wear it, tea drinking, caffeine intolerant, beard trimming, carp freak. I've been an angler for over 30 years and caught carp from waters far and wide, big and small. For me, it doesn't matter where, as long as the challenge is exciting and inspiring. But in this series, the target is out of my control. Three challenges will be put forward on Fox's Facebook page. Then it's up to you to have the final say on what mission I take on. I've faced some incredibly tough challenges so far. Have you been drinking de-icer again? Some of which I've smashed out the park. This one for the win. Others have dealt me a devastating blow. I literally have no words. But I'm still here and ready to pick up any gauntlet that is thrown down. This carp freak is not giving up without a fight. Yes. <laughs> this is the challenge. What's up Carp Freaks and welcome to the challenge. This challenge comes in from Andy Grimes and it's called Catch As You Mean To Go On. The aim of the challenge is for Mark to stay on the lake for 48 hours without running out of points. Mark will start the 48 hours with 300 points. He will lose 10 points every hour. He will lose 10 points for every carp under 10 pounds and he will lose 10 points for any fish caught that isn't a carp. Points can only be added to the total by catching carp over 10 pounds. The weight of the fish is added to the points total, which will buy more time on the bank. In order for Mark to survive... Survive? There's something else. I don't know. Survive, as in survive for 48 hours okay. without having to pack up. Okay, I thought there was something else going on. <laughs> okay. Like coming to murder you. He will need to catch carp consistently and above 10 pound. Okay, catch carp consistently. I mean, it's minus two right now. There is ice in the margins. It's Baltic. I thought you said you weren't going to eat. I'm not making excuses. excuses. I'm just saying catching carp consistently is going to be a bit of a, a tall ask, isn't it? But we're here. We've come to Doddington Lane Pits, which I'm told is absolutely nailed on to pass this challenge. No failing, no excuses, I've already been told to say. <laughs> uh, I don't know how this, this is going to go. I really don't. Um, if it was the summer or spring and yeah, I'd say that was pretty much pretty straightforward, but I don't know. Harry, you're confusing me. You're cameraman and also you're going to come in and talk about you just cameraman for this session. I'll, I'll, I'll be involved, yeah. You're involved. In what way? What is whichever what is, way I capacity? want, really. It doesn't really matter. I okay. can be involved in whatever way I want. I think the thing that you need to do is actually get cracking, because I mean, your time. Does your time start now? Your time no, starts now. It doesn't. It, it starts from when that that first rod lands in the water. That's when it starts. Mm. Come on. Okay. No, that's that is fair. But like, let's get cracking. Good. Let's go. Well, this challenge is already off to a, a winning start in my book because you can park behind your swim. Massive edge. But I have had a full lap of both the pits here, pit one and pit two. And I think I've seen what could be signs of fish. Um, just in front of the middle swim here, only probably 25 yards out, there's quite a few pinprick bubbles um, just sort of dimpling on the surface. Um, now it won't indicate that there's fish down there feeding on the bottom, but what it could mean is that there are fish sat mid-water and as they sort of sat mid-water, they're sort of balancing their swim bladder pressure and that causes them to release bubbles. So it could be that, it could just be natural gas coming out the silt, I don't know. But at this time of year, when there are so few signs to go on, this is the only sign that I've seen. So I'm going to start here. The plan is to start things off with adjustable zigs and 
play it by ear, see how the session goes from there. Well, I've just had a few casts around with the deeper and it did confirm my suspicions that there are fish in the area. And just as I thought, they are within the water column, really high up in the layer actually, just sort of two to three feet below the surface. So I've set up with an adjustable zig. Um, this comes as part of a kit. What we've got here is a inline float, which works pretty much like a, like a marker float. Above that, we've got a boom section and a run ring to ensure that the float and the line run nice and freely. Coming up to the hook link part, here I've got, it's around three feet of 10 pound zig and floater line going down to a size eight zig and floater hook. Because artificial baits are banned here, I'm using a eight mil black Northern Special pop-up there. And I've got a cut down zig aligner sleeve over the eye of the hook, just to ensure a nice wide gape and improve the hooking properties. On the zig float itself, there's a little recess and I've put a trimmed down piece of PVA foam and just nicked the hook through there. That just prevents any tanglings. Tanglings? <laughs> <laughs> that just prevents any tangles on the cast. So yeah, it's a really simple setup and very, very effective because it allows you to adjust the depth of the zig with just a few movements rather than reeling in and cutting down hook links or retying extensions and things like that. So yeah, it's a very versatile zig setup and I'm gonna get it in right now. So because these fish are only 15 yard out in front of me and really high up in the water, I don't want the, the lead and the float landing right on top of them. I'm gonna cast beyond the fish and then re retrieve it. So it's right in amongst the, the fish, it's almost sneaking in position and then pop it up to the depth of where the fish are sat. got two rods, two zigs in position. And how I've done it is I'm working from the top down over. So I've popped the zig float up on the surface. And with the hook link, the hook link is tied the exact same length as from the start of the butt ring to the roller on the top of the reel. So once it floats on the surface, I then grab the line, level with the butt ring, and then tighten the spool, turn the spool, until my fingers are at the roller on the reel. Then the float is under the surface and the hook bait will be just touching the surface. Now any depth I take off after that will be the depth at what the hook bait is presented below the surface. Now, after casting the deeper around, the fish were sat around two and a half to three feet below the surface. So I've just then taken uh, one rod, two and a half foot under, and another one three foot, so I've got both sort of options covered there. And those zigs, those hook baits, should be presented at the level where the fish are sat. We just need them now to hopefully make a mistake and pick up one of those zigs. Oh, and the rods are in the water. So, Kieran, hurry, the clock's ticking. Yeah, I reckon, well, it's 20 past, 20 past 12. 20 past 12, so here we go, 48 hours. Let's smash it. Right, go. 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 <laughs> go on then. Why isn't it go? Go. On, go. <laughs> You're an hour in. I'm an hour in. Hour in, and you've lost 10 points. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's kind of going as I expected it to be going. I mean, if I had a caught in the first hour, it would have been a massive bonus. Um, but 
I'm not gonna lie, I am starting to feel a little bit less confident now than I was an hour ago when I first put them zigs out. Yeah, them bubbles to me don't look like fish. I know they pinged up as fish on the deeper. Yeah. But I think, I think when think we got here, the it air. looks kind of fishy. They were very, very subtle, weren't they? Little sort of plips on the surface. Now, after sort of casting out and the, the lead's gone down, it seems to, there's more bubbles coming up. Yeah. So I think it's just trapped, trapped gas in the silt and just where the leads have gone down, there's loads of bubbles coming up now. So it's looking I think a lot is... less fishy now than it, than it did an hour ago. I... I'd agree. I think this is quite a good example as to you need to, as much as the technology is is useful in many situations, trusting your gut. Yeah. Is and the gut your gut said to go in here, and I think you would have gone in here anyway. Mm -hmm. But after being here for a little bit longer. It's yeah. Don't take suggesting... what you see as 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 gospel. Yeah. I think isn't it? But uh, yeah, I I mean I have had a beep. You've which, had a beep, which was exciting. Which, in Feb, that's a result to be honest <laughs> anyway you've got 47 hours yeah left yeah well you need to get you need to get to that 47 hour mark i think is that how it works i don't know how this works we've got 300 points we need 10 every hour so we've got yeah. 30 hours so you've got no yeah, yeah. so you're now Oh, so if, I, so, if I don't, so if I don't catch anything, we get to go home early? Yeah. Oh, result! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> Got 29 hours oh. to, to add to your Fantastic. hour tally. Oh, that's good. You're not, you're not even going to try now. <laughs> <laughs> no, you need to try. Okay. You are trying, you're tying up some... I'm doing some solid bag rigs, yeah. Solid bag rigs, yeah, solid yeah. bag diddlers. Right, I'm going to get some solid bag rigs done. Well, I'm not going to give it too much longer here. The more I am here, the less confident I am in those zigs and the less confident I am that they are fish in front of me. I think if I am to put enough fish together to pass this challenge, then I think I'm going to do that by creating some sort of feeding situation instead of fishing zigs where I'm kind of hoping for an opportunist fish that just picks it up out of curiosity. So I'm just tying up a few solid bag rigs right now. I do have the option of moving onto the lake next door. Uh, there was another area there that Craig, the bailiff, um, said has produced fish this winter when it has been cold. So yeah, I think, I think I'm gonna give it another half an hour here then perhaps move next door and look to fish solid bags and introduce a little bit of bait over the top to try and create a, uh, a feeding situation and hopefully get the challenge up and running and then build on that and put enough fish together to pass the challenge. You ready? Here we go. Here we go. Well, that didn't really work, did it? It looked good two hours ago. Doesn't look so good now, which is why I am reeling the rods, going over onto the other lake, and I'm gonna try a different tactic over there, and hopefully we can uh, get the challenge up running. Right, mind just seeing you around there? Yeah. Okay. Right, I need you to close the door and then drive yeah. off. Oh, actually. Is this? I've got something for you. Okay. Well, not from me. Remember Wendy, Ellie Mae, Ant and Jay? Yeah. Who got you the dick biscuits <laughs> that you loved? Yeah. Yeah, we got you something else. Great. Yeah. I can't remember what it is. I've seen it, but I've forgotten what it is. Is it? It's a t-shirt. If it's a taste, 
tasteful as the dick biscuit biscuits. I'm not necessarily I can't, I don't know what it excited. Is. I want to read it first. A t-shirt that says Harry, nice. That's actually, okay. no, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the, you've got your the, name on the there. The carp on it is a little bit Nash. Are you ready? Oh, that's quite cool. <laughs> yeah, that's quite cool. There you go. I'm I've got Harry one as well. Harrington, filmmaking, hobnob eating, tea drinking, carp freak from the Cunliffs. There you go. There you go. Thank you very much. There you go. Right, get that. <laughs> I'm going. So what's your plan? Solid bags, 10 Solid spots bags. over the top. Solid bags. Sheep the bailiff up, use exactly the tactics he's been using. I wouldn't know if he's been fishing solid bags, I don't know. He said oh, bags, so, that right. could be solids, it could be mesh bags, I don't know, I don't know. Tea bags. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bags for life, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> just, just a hairy bag for life. <laughs> Why is that there? Craig has been doing overnighters on the smaller pits one and two and is having regular multiple captures on solid bags, 10 spots of crumb and um, carp freak pop-ups. <laughs> ah, I see, but you're trying to be different to Craig by using a Northern Special. I get it, I get it. Don't think Craig was using a rod pod either. No, well, probably not. That could be the edge you need. I think so. Really don't need a pod in this swim, but I'm using one because I'm a lazy. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't look right. Can't put a pod on a muddy swim. No, you can't really. Nah, I'm not using that pod. Can't, I can't be having it. Oh, look at it, it's muddy. I'm using bag sticks. Ah. Right then, here we go, winning. Ah! My white bobbins! You dirty p So I've got two rods out there now, both being fished in solid bags. And I'm just gonna put a few spawns of bait over the top. All I'm putting out is just crumbed up live system boilies, which are boosted with the, the live system booster. And I've got a few small pellets in there as well, just to match what's inside the solid PVA bags. And that's it, I'm just gonna put eight to 10 spawns over those two rods. And then once I've done that, I'm going to get the third body position, just a little bit off the baited area, and just put a couple of spawns over the top of that one. mental on reels for you. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. I'm not even putting that pose on. I wasn't genuinely looking. <laughs> no. So we are four and a half hours into the challenge now. 
with no fish on the score sheet, minus 40 points. But I'm not actually that worried at the moment. I, I kind of expected if I was to catch anything, it would be at night. And I'm, I'm kind of quietly confident going into tonight. Quietly confident of catching, whether I can catch enough to sort of make any dent on the challenge, I don't know. But no, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of feeling it for tonight. I, I think you're in with a good shout. Like, I think you bait, you baited up nicely, not too much, very accurate. Nice solid bags, little pellet yeah. mix. Um, yeah, so aside from doing like probably more textbook winter tactics like fishing maggots and stuff like that, yeah. couldn't really be doing anything else. Yeah, I, I do wish I brought some maggots, but uh, yeah. No, I'm, I'm kind of confident in what I'm, I'm doing. And everyone's using maggots at the moment. I didn't want to go down that route. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. seen maggot fishing videos now. It's getting towards the end of the winter. Let's 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 let's, let's put some on. bait in. Yeah, yeah. Let's fill it in with boilies. <laughs> <laughs> Harry, I can't help but notice you mm. haven't updated your pronouns on your Instagram page. Any reason why? No, I don't feel like I need to. I'd like to know. <laughs> You'd like to know what my pronouns yeah, are. Yeah, just yeah. Well, it's he. He, him, I guess. What are okay. your pronouns on Instagram? Um, what, why? <laughs> that's, that's what I've gone with. So, why? No, so, it's what and why. Why? And what? What, why? Yeah. Why? Yeah. <laughs> but why? <laughs> no. What by? <laughs> because? No, you don't get it. It's what <laughs> and why. For what reason? Oh. Well, why not? No, I mean, it's not why not. It's what, <laughs> what why. <laughs> I can't Fuck have this know. conversation with you. <laughs> right, I'm going to go home. It's getting cold. Well, it's just after half past nine now, which means we are nine hours into the challenge. No fish on the bank, so 90 points deducted from the total. And... You know, going into tonight, I actually felt really confident. I, I did think we'd have a fish on the bank by now. But with every minute that goes by, I'm getting less and less confident. I mean, it is really, really cold. Um, too cold for Harry. He's gone home. But he doesn't know what he's missing. We've got a great fire on the go, some Bailey's hot chocolates. We've had a curry. Might not have caught anything, but I'm loving it. That's an absolute lie. <laughs> That is a complete lie. It's shit.
was, that was last night then. It, I mean, I was nice and toasty in my sleeping bag because I never left my sleeping bag. Nothing happened all night. Woke up this morning, lake was about a third frozen over. Bobbins never moved, nothing at all. It's, this challenge is really pulling away from me now. I need to have, I think it's gonna take a miracle to, to pass this, if I'm honest. Oh, he's dropped in that one, a miracle. Said that before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just like, like it to look climactic. When, Always. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, it it needs a complete a complete change around to pass this challenge, doesn't it really? And I think that now involves a change of venue. Um, there's a lot of fish in here. There is, but yeah, it was it was so cold last night. Third of the lake frozen over. If they don't want to feed, that there's not much you can really do about. About that I feel like I'm in the right areas and everything it looked good but you know if they're not willing to feed then what can you do so I am going to move venue but I need to make a few phone calls first see where I can get on at such short notice and just take it from there why are we doing this in England in February we could have gone anywhere in the world the Maldives <laughs> that that well-known carp fishing <laughs> set of islands. Yeah, that would have been good. Fishing for <laughs> bonefish. How many bonefish can you catch? How many tarpon, <laughs> sailfish, marlin can you catch in 48 hours? Yeah? Yeah. It's a great challenge. Good morning, Man of Farm Lakes. Hiya there, I wonder if you could help me. It's uh, Mark Pictures here from Fox. Um, right. I'm just out on the bank at the moment. We're just filming a challenge and it's not going very well. And I was wondering if there was any availability on the carp lake at the moment. Okay, great. Right. Thanks for your help. Thanks for that. Right. Cheers, mate. Thank All you. Right, mate. Cheers. Bye. 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 So we've had a change of venue. I'm now at Manor Farm Biggleswade after a 45 minute drive. I have actually been here before for a challenge. Seven years ago, we're here. Uh, that was in the summer. It was a lot different back then, but this place does have really good winter form. And I've just found a jar of Bovril in the van. So already the session is turned around. This is the swim that I've decided to at least start in. Um, just had a lap of the lake, haven't seen any signs of fish. There are a couple of other anglers on, uh, nothing's been caught, but there were a few fish caught in this sort of area at the weekend. And right now that's pretty much all I've got to go on. Um, there's just 80 points left on this challenge, which means eight hours remaining. And I really do need to catch something sooner rather than later if I'm to try and at least claw this challenge back. So I'm gonna get the kit out the van and uh, get started. I'm just having a few casts around with the, with the leading rod. I'm just looking for a little bit of shallower water. The first cast I made was about two thirds over towards the, the other side. And it felt quite deep. It felt, I don't know, 13, 14 foot deep, something like that. I'm just working my way a little bit further over. And um, I want to be just as it starts to, to shelve up on the, 
on the other side there. A little bit of weed and, and, and debris at the bottom of, of that slope. A lot shallower there. Probably only got eight foot. Pulling the lead back there, it's quite smooth. A few little taps of gravel. And it sort of sticks. And it starts to get a little bit more, there's more resistance, there's a little bit more choddy. So I think I want to be fishing just past where it starts to, where it starts to slope up and the lake bed's a bit cleaner. So I'm just going to wrap, wrap that up. So that will now be, just as it starts to slope up, so I'll recast now. Two little taps and then it just lead just sort of plugs in. That's perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap this round the distance sticks now. Do exactly the same with the fishing rods. Put two rods on that spot, take this lead off, put a spom on, a few spoms of bait over the top, pretty much how I did fish on the uh, previous venue. Hopefully though we'll have a different result this time round. Well, them solid bags have been in 40 minutes, I think, something like that, three quarters of an hour. And I thought it was just a liner at first. It got me sort of scurrying down to the rods to investigate. But uh, it isn't, it's a fish. <laughs> doing a lot at the moment. It doesn't feel a bad size actually. It's just sort of plodding around. It feels nice just to hear the alarms go and be into a fish. This could well be a bit of a get out of jail. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, it was so quick. I must say at the Kievan though, why haven't I had one already? It seems like time's moving a lot slower at the moment. I sort of looked at my watch and it felt like hours had passed. But why, like, how, why haven't I had one already? Where, yeah. where you've just spent 24 hours blanking. Yeah. <laughs> so I was just looking at the weather. It's like, again, going to be like minus twos, minus threes tonight. Yeah. It's savage conditions. Put them in. It's not on the bank yet, though. It doesn't feel bad at all. I mean, it's up a double to this one like that. That's Yeah, it'll do. Is he 16, 17? That's bigger than that. Huh? Is it? I don't want to lose it. Don't lose it. I'm trying my best not to lose it. 
So it so what so you've got about six hours remaining currently before landing this fish. Yeah. So if this fish is twenty pounds, so you're on sixty points right now. Yeah. If it's a twenty pounder, you'll be on eighty points. Wow. Is that good? That's better than being on sixty points. Yes. That's a twenty pounder. You think it's twenty pounds? Okay. This time, here we go. This is come on, here we go. This is the one. There it is. There it is. There it is. And it, he's there. <laughs> here we go. This is it. This is the one. Here we go. This is it. Right now. Here we go. He's there. I'm here. Come on. This is it. This is the one. Right now. Here it is. This is the one. Come on. This is it. Come on. Get in there. Get in there. Yes! Get in! Oh, he is. He is a bit bigger than I thought. He's. Hi, doubles. You think a bit bigger? Hurry. That's a 20 pounder. 20 pounder. That's good. Well then. done, mate. That's. That's good. I am absolutely buzzing with that. Whether I pass or fail the challenge, just to be out on the bank when it's Baltic, catching fish, that's a proper buzz for me. Make the move, come somewhere else, catch catch one really, really quickly. I'm over the moon with that. Right, I'm going to, actually what I'm going to do, there's only two rods here uh, at Manor Farm. Uh, I'm going to get another rod out of the van. I'm going to have a, like a third rod always set up, ready to go out. I really do need to try and get as many bites of the can fish as efficiently as I can. I've got another bag rig ready to go and another rod. I'm going to get that back out there on that spot, try and maximise my chances, and then we're going to take a look at this fish that we've got. Be like 24s. We'll soon see. No. It's 22 though. 22 pounds. So that's 22 hours on the clock. Almost there. 22 hours. <laughs> <laughs> if I understand this correctly. 22 pounds. He's a proper character fish, isn't he, with his Double belly and his missing, missing pelvics, pectorals, pelvics. Pelvics. No pelvics, double belly, twist scale, that one, <laughs> as I think he's known. Cool fish, really cool fish. And here we are, we are up and running with this cracking 22 pound common. Very distinctive with his no pelvics and that twisted scale, double belly awesome fish on a bitly cold day and I'm absolutely buzzing and this gives me 22 points which I don't know what that means but I think it's good and it gives me more time on the clock and more points towards the total I believe something like that I don't know but right now I'm just buzzing to be holding this really nice 22 pounder Now throughout this session. Session? I know. Wow. Now during this session, I've pretty much extensively been fishing with solid PVA bags, apart from the adjustable zigs that I used right at the very start. Solid PVA bags are a great winter tactic. They provide just a attractive mouthful of food, which is often enough to provoke or entice a bite. And I also think a lot of the times a fish can take the hook bait by mistake. Once that PVA has melted, it leaves you with that attractive parcel of food and the hook bait 
just so happen to be hidden in that little patch of feed. So when the fish comes along, eats that mouthful of food, I think a lot of the times the hook bait, like I say, I think it does get taken in by accident. Um, now the rig I use for my solid PVA bag fishing is super simple. It's tied using two components. So all I have is a short four inch length of 25 pound reflex braid and in this instance, it's going down to a size six stiff rig barbless hook. And I've created a bit of a, a blowback effect there just by tying an overhand knot in the braid to the hook. That way it kind of creates a bit of a blowback effect and it saves the need for having to use any silicon tubing or rig rings. Um, you might be wondering why I'm using a stiff rig hook, an outturned eye with a braided hook link. For me, I just really like that nice wide gape. I think it gives more, more room, more metal to catch a hold in the carp's mouth. And I found the hooking to be incredibly effective. The hook bait I'm using is a yellow CC Moore Northern Special Wafter. And all this sits beneath an inline lead of three ounces. An inline lead is the best option when fishing with solid PVA bags. It's a lot less clutter that fits neatly inside the confines of a small PVA bag. I know a lot of people like to pre-tie their solid PVA bags, have them on PVA stems or, or leaders ready to go. Though I don't do that myself, I find that the Rapid PVA loader system is, is quick enough for me. I can tie solid PVA bags in just a matter of seconds. Well, that's it. That's my super simple solid PVA bag setup. It's accounted for countless fish over the years and hopefully it's going to account for a few more and see me through to the end of this 48 hour challenge. How are you, how are you liking your, your chances of the, of the challenge now? You feeling better? I'm feeling better than I did before I caught it. I still think it's out of reach but I'm going to give it my best shot. You think it's out of reach? Yeah. He's literally turned up here and caught one almost straight away. <laughs> yeah, but I was getting a few knocks and nudges and twinges and twitches and fiddles. I haven't been fiddled with for ages <laughs> now. <laughs> there you are, and, and that sun's going down. And it's getting cold. Brews on. Oh. I, I'm going to give you, because I'm feeling generous, because I feel like, I feel like you've lost a lot of time at that, at that other venue where it just, it wasn't going to happen there. I mean, it might have happened, but it, it wasn't, yeah. wasn't going, not with the conditions. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to be very generous. This is... Here we go. I'm go going on. soft in, uh, in mm. my old age. Yeah, go on. Here we go. I'm going to give you a chance to win 10 points. Mm. You've got to... You've only got one chance. You, oh, that might have been a fiddle. <laughs> You've got one chance to yeah. throw a tea bag into a mug at five yards. If you do it, You've got one go. Yeah. If you do it, I'll give you ten points. I'll just give it to you. just give you a free okay, that's, ten that's points. Okay, that's generous actually. So just one the tea bags out of the cup now, into another cup. No, no, a dry no, as if a you're dry making, one. If you're just as if you're about to make a brew. Your mates come down for a bit of a social, just like oh, gone like here, mate. I'll, like make me a brew, and you've just picked up the the tea bag, yeah. flung it, and it's gone in straight straight away. Yeah. Like I imagine. If somebody went and like had a brew in Terry swim, that's what he'd do. Yeah, hundred percent. You wouldn't even need to look. No, you just got that, and it'd, it'd go in. in. The carp right. gods would send it. <laughs> yeah, he'd probably, he probably does that. He probably goes send it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Right then. Right. I'm all over this. I need to drink a brew first though to have. An empty cup. yeah vessel vessel right I'm gonna get some milk and I'm all over this thank you for this opportunity I'm worried it might disintegrate 
mid-flight due to the air pressure. Okay. So you're just focusing on it. You ready? Uh, I'm right. I mean, there's no chance. But this, I mean, there's, there's, there's chance. every chance. There's chance. Okay. Go on then. <laughs> no! Oh, no way! No way! Did you just do that? I can't actually. Yes, nailed it. Never. Yeah. I've been practicing for. I've been practicing all my life for that moment. <laughs> you channeled your inner Terry. <laughs> Well, it's only been five minutes since my epic tea bag shot into the cup. And now I'm playing a fish. I really do feel like the wind is in my sails at the moment. <laughs> it feels another decent fish actually. It doesn't feel bad at all. It's crazy that in such Terrible conditions. I mean, it's mega high air pressure, flat calm. It was minus five here last night, the bailiff has just told us. And yet you can come here and get a couple of bites in just a couple of hours. You really wouldn't fancy your chances at all if you were just rocking up now, but yeah. Here we go. Right. And Gotcha. Right. Yes! That's a result. It's quite a bit bigger than I thought as well, actually. I think that's high doubles. I think that could be 17s, 18s. So an 18 pounder would take me to 40 points plus the tea bag, 50 points, five more hours. I think uh, I'm beginning to think I can do this. The sun is starting to set now. Temperatures are really starting to drop. And if I hadn't, I'd just caught those couple of fish and expertly thrown a tea bag into a mug. I would be almost at the end of this challenge and be ready to go on with my tail between my legs. But right now, the very opposite is true. I've got the bit between my teeth and I'm now thinking I'm going to do this. I've got a fish sat in the net while that fish is waiting to be weighed and get a closer look at him. I'm just getting my, my third rod, my spare rod, back out in position. I'm not wasting any time at all. I want to maximise my chances, have the rods in the water for as long as possible and really, uh, really build on this. I feel like I'm gaining momentum all the time. You ready? I'm ready. Ooh! Ooh! 22.12. It's another 22 pounds. 22 Good skills, 12. mate. Two twenty twos, double twenty two on the bounce. I shouldn't have even given you that that little uh, helping hand. No, I don't I'll think you need it. it. I'll take it. And you lax in, you lax in. Twenty two twelve, two twenty two pounds on the bounce. On the bounce. 
Right, look at this. Look at his length. That's impressive length. Isn't it? Are you, are you normally more impressed by length? I'm more impressed by, by length than girth. I'm not going to lie. And this one doesn't have a lot of girth. But my God, he's got some length. <laughs> Almost too much length for me to handle. Here we are. Second carp in just a few hours, another 22 pounder. And I feel like I'm flying at the moment. I've got the rods back out there. I feel like a bike can come at any moment. But until then, I'm just kind of taking it all in really. Two 22 pounders on a bitterly cold day. That already for me is a fantastic winter session. So what's happening? You're going home again, you massive house. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Sorry. It's all right. It'd be nice, right. nice and warm back home. Are you coming but back in the morning? No. No? I don't know. Not <laughs> even going to... No. Kieran's got you covered. Has he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you've got it covered, Kieran, haven't you? Yeah. Okay, can Kieran I throw any more sorted. tea bags, any mugs before you go, anything like that? No, uh, to be fair, I'm regretting doing that really? already. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think um, that's given you too much of a of an edge, of I an think. advantage. But I would say fair play for uh, for moving and getting on them because that's pretty good. Yeah, no, I'm quite. I happy think you're with in with the shot. You're in with the shot. So, so good luck. Thanks, mate. And uh, I'm going home. Keep me posted. To the warmth. To, yeah, to warmth and um, poo and sick. Yeah. And crying. So. Yeah. What about the babies? Oh, all right. That... Yeah, baby, yeah. yeah, baby's fine. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Right. Fish Cheers, you. <laughs> well, it's just after half five, and I've not had anything since that second fish. I've not had any liners or indications or anything. Um, I haven't introduced any bait yet. I've just been fishing solid bags. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to recast both rods with fresh solid bags, give it another hour, and if still nothing's happened, then I might introduce a few spawns of bait over the top. But right now, I'm going to get these rods reeled in, fresh bags on, and get them back out there. Well, it's been an hour since I recast some solid PVA bags and nothing's happened. I've had a, a few little indications, that's about it. So I do feel like now it's probably the time to introduce a little bit of bait to try and either attract fish, more fish into the area or to try and create some sort of active feeding response. So I'm just going to put out three or four spawns of boily chrome, a little bit of sweet corn over the top and hopefully we can uh, kickstart things moving again.
Well, it is fast approaching 11.20 now. And unless I get a double take and I'm able to land both those fish in the next 90 seconds, then I think that's me done. I just, I feel like if I had a little bit more time, I'm confident of one of those rods ripping off at any moment, I really am. If I had a little bit more time, I think I could have had a fish or two tonight. Maybe it's a first light bite or something like that. And I think I could have done it or come somewhere close, but blanking for so long, almost 24 hours, on the first venue and then driving here. I think that just had me on the back foot. Yes, conditions were massively against me, but that, that's winter fishing, isn't it? So you, you, you just take that as it is. But I mean, what? how long we got left, Kevin? now? 40 seconds. 40 seconds. I don't want to have to call a challenge early, but I really do think, as, as painful as it is for me to say this, I think the only words left to say now are challenge failed.